Pania trailing. Malik, left wing three, you bet. Here they go. Malik, same spot, same result. Hannah Malik knocks it down. Timeout, Seagulls. So two misses, but the Generals get it back. Dontremont with a flush. What a pass. It's another Saturday inside the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. Today, the number eight Guilford Quakers hit the bus and come north this afternoon to face off against the Washington and Lee Generals in Lexington. Hello, everybody, and welcome up to the booth alongside my broadcast partner, Caden Buss. I am Jack Hunter, and Caden, it was a tough loss for Guilford last weekend. They dropped from number two in the country to number eight after falling to Randolph-Macon, but a big bounce back midweek win over Virginia Wesleyan has them riding high coming into today. Yeah, bouncing. Let's get you two score updates around the league. Hampton, Sydney, about 17 seconds into the second half, holding a five-point lead over Shenandoah. That's also a pretty low score in the game at 34 to 29. And then Bridgewater's opened up the floodgates on Lynchburg on the road. Bridgewater up 17 over the Hornets. We'll get you some other scores at our next timeout. Dibionel's going to come out here and look for some action under the rim. Try to get Decibio. Dontremont has really been the one to keep Dibionel in this game. The basket finished strong. Cut this lead back to six. Eight on the shot clock. Ryan, the one to inbound. He's got to get it in. The Generals already called that timeout. Harrell drives. Gets it back with three on the clock. Harrell gets it again. Laughlin now this time. Got it. The Generals giving the Quakers a taste of their own medicine. Something important to note there, Jack, is two offensive rebounds on that possession more than the, than the WNL had the whole first half with only one offensive rebound. Finally getting some putbacks and was able to get a second chance bucket there. Birch, wraparound pass, Little John, a knuckling three, can't go, and DeCibio crashing the glass. Yeah, WNL really, DeCibio was there crashing the glass along with Laughlin. Trying to get these boards is, I'm sure that's something Coach Chris McHugh hammered down on the WNL team as you see a foul on the baseline. Luke Proctor, the one to commit it, and he's biting some of his jersey right now because the Quakers had DeCibio off that short roll in a pretty good spot in the short corner, trapping him, but now the Generals with 20 on the clock will get a run of play. Into DeCibio, a lot of daylight, and he nails it! Sibio finally got an open look, was able to knock it down as Generals cut this lead to three points, which is the, the lowest lead that the Quakers have had this whole half as they force a turnover. WNL has something going. DeCibio in between the circles now. Laughlin tries to get into the post, but Birch cannot save it as he's going for the steal. Yeah, it looks like at the beginning of this half, they're really trying to play this ball through DeCibio. Whether it's a distributor or a scorer, as you saw, it knocked down the three earlier. He's trying to pass as the Guilford defense is really surrounding him in Entremont. Guilford got the first bucket of this game and has not looked back. Harrell, far corner. Puts his head down. Turnaway two, pure. Tough jumper there from Morrell with the fadeaway and cut this lead to one point as WNL is looking to get a stop here. The crowd getting behind the home blue and white. Chris McHugh on a knee at the scores table telling his team to talk and communicate amidst all the noise. Luke Proctor post entry to Birch who gets past Laughlin and finishes for two. Decibio on the help there, just a little bit late, was almost able to reject that ball just a little late. See an entry to Dontremont, and he keeps it high and gets the bucket underneath. He's got 10 first generals player in double figures. It's back to a one-point game. Guilford has led for almost 97% of the game. The other 3% was the first seconds of the first half when the game was tied at zero. Proctor, step back three, short, and Little John cannot save it. The Generals will have an opportunity to get their first lead of the afternoon. See what the Generals do here. Try to play it through DeCibio or Harrell's had the hot hand recently along with Dontremont. 
as Colin Ryan brings it past half court. Luke Proctor guarding him tightly. Birch has his hard. McHugh wants a foul, not going to get one. Harrell trying to turn the corner. Step back from the free throw line short, and Deerman collects the rebound. These refs are really letting him play and not calling much, even though it's a physical game, not calling much on either side. That's going to naturally benefit Guilford. It's physicality more in their style. The third-ranked defense in all of Division III basketball. Deerman hopping to the lane. Little John, one more to Proctor. Got a step on Harrell, leans in off the glass. Good defense there from Harrell, though. He was able to fake towards the, the offensive player in the corner and try to recover just a little bit late. Ryan underneath, Dontremont goes up strong, trying to get his rebound, can't. And the general's bench is irate that no foul was called. Guilford's going to get it. Newenhaus and Robertson are going to check in amidst all the chaos. Decibio is headed to the bench. Again, around this 15 minute mark, trying to preserve him for a run down the stretch. Seems like, see if the, the youth of Robertson and Newenhaus can keep up with this really good Guilford team. So Tom Palumbo is going to take a timeout to talk it over with his team. Tensions riding high in Lexington as Guilford holding on to a 37 to 34 lead. It's a low scoring affair here as we're four and a half minutes through the second half. But now with a great shot here. We we're just down one moments ago, but now a three point lead. Guilford with the ball. Tyler Deerman guarded tightly by Harrell. Deerman walks into a left wing three and misses short. 0 for his last four. Big rebound there from the first year is Robertson straight away three. Yes. How about the rebound from the first year and then the three pointer from the other first year on the team to tie this game up at 37 after being down 18 to five at the 13 minute point of the first half. It's tied for the first time since 1930 left to go in the first half. It's over 24 minutes of action. And now the Generals can take their first lead as Robertson setting things up in between the circles. Decibio and Thomas are at the scores table to check in. It looks like Decibio got his rest. Newenhouse, long on the three. Fight for the rebound. It'll stay here, says the sideline referee on the near side. Crowd is ecstatic about that call. They haven't been happy with the refs this whole all game. Looks like they're happy with this call. They're finally getting into the game here. Keyshawn Tate will check in for Caleb Farish. Tate, the graduate student, transfer from St. Augustine. Robertson will lob it up to the big six foot nine Newenhouse, who gets fouled by Julius Birch. Fouls have been hard to come by here for both teams as they draw one. Get ever closer to that elusive bonus mark that we actually didn't see in the first half. Well, Caden, the funny note is that when Guilford women's basketball was here against Washington and Lee, there was over 50 total fouls in that game. And here the refs are swallowing the whistle. Harrell from the short corner, and the Generals have their first lead of the afternoon. What a shot. 